If you're a beginner cyclist, it can be a bit intimidating knowing exactly what kit you need to start enjoying your new sport. Well, today, that mystery ends. I've been a cyclist for about 50 years now, and back when I first started, I had no idea of what I needed. And by the time I did, of course, it was already far too late, and I was usually sat cold and miserable and shivering by the side of the road because I didn't have everything I needed to get me back home again. And just so that you don't have these happy memories, today I'm going to go through the 30 or so items that I think you will need as a beginner cyclist. Back when I first started doing longer rides, I can remember puncturing. And unfortunately, I can also remember then having to walk for hours to get home because I didn't have anything to fix it. But this could have been so easily avoided if I'd had some spare tubes, a puncture repair kit, and a set of tire levers. These days though, thanks to tubeless tires, punctures aren't so much of an issue. And if you are running tubeless, then I suggest you take some extra sealant. Regardless of whatever tire setup you have though, you will need a mini pump or a CO2 inflator. And it's also a good idea to have a mini multi-tool for any mechanicals that you may have. And all of this can be fitted nice and neatly into a saddlebag. When you do puncture, you'll probably only manage some half-assed effort by the side of the road to inflate your tire. So when you get home, you'll need to pump it up properly using a more robust track pump, preferably one like this with a pressure gauge. Nowadays, I take all sorts of extra items with me, including my mobile phone. And it's a good idea to pack all of this conveniently in a case, which can then be stored nice and neatly in your jersey pocket. To this day, I am notoriously bad at hydrating myself on the bike, but don't make the same mistake. Get yourself at least two water bottles because you will need them, particularly when the weather is warm. If you're going out at night, you'll need a good quality set of lights. And if you're leaving your bike anywhere, even if it's only in your own garage, a good quality lock is absolutely essential. Back in the 1980s, if I wanted to know how far or how fast I'd ridden, I'd have to try and work it out myself. Or if I was feeling particularly thick, I'd have to go and ask my dad. He knew everything like that. Today though, unless you're particularly into things like maps, slide rules and sundials, and because, well, it is the 21st century after all, it's going to be far easier to use a cycling computer. Now, while a cycling computer isn't exactly necessary, it's one of these nice to have items as it's really interesting to see the numbers of your ride. And you can even use them to help you improve your overall fitness. If you buy one of the more advanced computers, you might as well also get things like heart rate and cadence sensors. And while you're there, why not also sign up for Strava as it's one of these fun things that will help you log your rides. Basic membership is completely free, so why not? So that's you on the road. Now let's move on and see what you need to wear while you're cycling. I started out doing my first serious rides just wearing a pair of regular shorts, but this really restricted my movements and after two nanoseconds of sitting in the saddle, it felt like I was sat on a couple of wet Weetabix. If you only buy one item of cycle clothing, then make sure it's a pair of proper cycling shorts. Even if you don't like wearing Lycra, you can always wear them underneath regular shorts, but the important thing is that they have the padding in the arse area, as this will make sitting on the saddle for long periods of time so much more comfortable. I would suggest buying two pairs of short shorts for summer riding, and a pair of longer bottoms for winter riding. Now, the other part of my early cycling attire back then was a plain cotton t-shirt, and this started to feel all cold and clammy when I started sweating. Now, I appreciate that many of us manly frame riders don't really relish the idea 
of looking like a walrus stuffed into a sausage skin, and that's all fine and dandy, but Lycra really is the best material to wear on the bike because it wicks sweat away and you won't feel like you're going to die of hypothermia when the wind picks up a little. Again, I would recommend buying a couple of short sleeve jerseys for summer riding and a longer sleeve jersey for winter riding. Gloves are particularly important items of cycle clothing because they'll not only keep your hands warm in winter, but they'll also stop sweaty hands from sliding off the handlebars in the summer, as well as acting as an added layer of skin protection should you fall off. And it's a similar story with sunglasses. Not only will they protect your eyes from bright sunlight, but they'll also prevent things like dust, insects and road debris from getting in your eyes. Plus, they also make you look pretty cool. The key to dressing for cycling, particularly if you want to stay warm and dry in the autumn and the winter, is to dress in layers. And the rest of the cycle clothing that you will need will help you do exactly that. So it's things like arm and leg warmers, waterproof gilets, waterproof jackets, warm base layers, and even things like neck warmers. And all this can be stored nice and neatly in your jersey pockets and you can put them on and take them off as the weather changes. Back when I was a teenager, nobody wore cycle crash helmets, but then we all thought we were pretty indestructible in those days anyway. Don't hate me, but today I feel very differently. To wear a crash helmet or not to wear a crash helmet is, believe it or not, one of the most controversial issues in cycling today. And I'm not gonna go into all of that, all I'll say is that I personally would never go out for a ride without a crash helmet, but it's up to you, whatever tickles your pickle. Other nice to have items are proper cycling shoes and socks. Now again, there's a certain amount of controversy around how effective cycling shoes and cleats and pedals actually are, but in my opinion, I personally wouldn't ride without them because I think I can feel that they really help with the power transfer, particularly when I'm climbing. Obviously, if you have the shoes and the cleats, you'll need the pedals as well. It's up to you, whatever pumps your bump. When I was a lad, all that we had to look after our bikes was a sponge, a bucket, a bottle of washing up liquid, a can of WD-40 and the classic 1980s multi-tool a dirty great big hammer. Thankfully though, today we live in much more enlightened times. The bucket and the sponge will still come in quite handy, but I would also suggest getting some bike specific cleaning brushes, along with some proper bike degreaser, bike wash and bike lube, and then cleaning your bike once a week or so. You will also need to do some very basic bike maintenance from time to time. So things like tightening your headset, adjusting your gears, and adjusting your brakes. But you can do all of this using the mini multi-tool that's already in your saddlebag. But if you have a maintenance task that's anything more than that, at this early stage, I would suggest it's a job for your local, independent, qualified bike mechanic. So that, more or less, is the 30 essential items that I think you will need as a beginner cyclist. The good news is that you can buy all of the clothing and things like the saddlebag and the phone case from my sponsors Altura. And the even better news is that you can get a massive 30% discount on everything that you buy. For everything else, such as cleaning products and cycling computers, etc., you can get those in my Amazon store, and I'll leave a link to both in the description below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.